Progressive presents an interview with your upstairs neighbor. Hi, I'm Tia. The upstairs downstairs neighbor dynamic is so special. We have our own language. Like when I scream at my mom on the phone, the people downstairs bang on the ceiling to show their support. The nighttime's the best time to rearrange furniture. I call it midnight feng shui. And if I sleep through my alarm in the morning, they bang on my door to wake me. So thoughtful. Progressive can't save you from your upstairs neighbor, but we can save you money when you bundle renters and auto insurance with us. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. Introducing touch-free payments from PayPal, a safe way for your customers to pay. Simply download the PayPal app and display your own unique QR code for your customers to scan. Whether you're a market seller, I'll take two tomatoes and a cucumber. poodle pamperer, <laughs> piano tuner, or plumber. Signing up to accept touch-free payments for your business is easy. Touch-free QR code payments. Not applicable to PayPal here transactions. Other fees may apply. Shop safe with PayPal. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for downloading Sporgy for free on iTunes or from ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate Sporgy five stars on iTunes and help to tell others about Sporgy by leaving a comment. Thank you for following Sporgy on Twitter at Sporgy Podcast and on Instagram at Sporgy underscore podcast. Please follow Sporgy on Facebook to like and share Sporgy. You can also email the show. The address is sporgy at christophermedia.net. If you would like to donate to Sporgy, you can click on the PayPal button at christophermedia.net. If you use Amazon.com, please click and bookmark the Amazon link at christophermedia.net. It will not cost you any extra money, and you will help to support Sporgy. If you are looking to launch your own website, please click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Christopher Media uses HostGator to host all of the shows produced by the Christopher Media Network. When you click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net and sign up for HostGator, you're helping to support Sporgy. We know that choosing the perfect gift for a man is a difficult task, but not anymore. TheBroBasket.com is here to help. We all know men are hard to shop for, but what do guys actually like? Their favorite alcohol, that's what. It could be craft beer, wine, whiskey, scotch, or tequila. TheBroBasket.com will put it in a gift basket full of their favorite gear and goodies. You can customize your own bro basket or choose from a variety of different bro baskets, like the Ultimate Import Sampler, the Jack and Coke gift set, or the Junior Executive gift basket. Boozeless, but still cool, bro baskets are also available. TheBroBasket.com gives you many shipping options to choose from, including rush delivery and Saturdays. 21 and over, please. State and local laws apply. Beer, wine, and liquor are not available for shipping in all states. You can help to support Christopher Media by clicking through the BroBasket.com banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Men used to be hard to shop for. The BroBasket.com. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. Welcome to Sporty, the show that gives you half ass sports fans giving their half ass opinions. And now, here are your hosts. Welcome to Sporty, number 63. I'm Chris. And I'm Rich. And the Iceman will be back in September. Uh, He's on vacation. Yeah, hopefully in a couple weeks. Yeah, that's 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 the plan here. Um, real life has has uh, you know kind of you know happened to him, and he has to take care of that. So yeah, he'll be back. He's still going to be playing fantasy football with us. Which hit up our social media if you want to get on the league. We still got a few spots left. Uh, by the time this posts, we'll be drafting in about 10 days-ish, shooting for the, the Sunday the 3rd. Uh, but once we get everybody in, all the spots filled, we can, you know, that, that day can be flexible. Uh, so, but till we'll still get his picks. I want to see how he does, you know, a whole season. He's always going to have that asterisk by last season because he didn't jump in until October. But, uh, remember, yeah, so... Fourteen and two. That's the Lions. It's the Lions' record for 2017, yeah. according to Iceman. Fourteen and two, gentlemen. My God. And, oh, and ladies, sorry. Didn't mean. My to. God. It was the way, just the way it would be around here. <laughs> but um, number sixty-three. Uh, I actually know this one because he played for the Bucks. Leroy Selman. There you go. That's that's that's, that's uh, all I got. That's all I have. <clears throat> <laughs> I want to say Johnny Grubb, but I'm going to have to involve Google on this one. Wait a minute. I might have another one. I think Gene Upshaw 
was number 63. Former, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, yeah, former president of the Players Association, Gene Upshaw, when he played, I think he was 63 also. The only reason I know that is because I don't remember him playing because I think he retired before I was even born. <laughs> I just remember every time they'd show him as a head of the Players Association, they'd show game footage of him playing. So I think he was 63. Uh, uh, come on. Wikipedia. Here we get a list of the numbers that he wore. Johnny Grubb. That's a name I haven't even thought of in forever, dude. Jesus. Good Lord. That That is... Well, because well, I had like a little... Tigers fantasy day when I was like six. It was him, Tom Brookins, and Jack Morris. I had to meet all three of them. There's a oh, picture of me ask. floating around like six years old with the three of them. I got to ask, was Morris uh, an asshole to you? No, he is nice. Dude, I was like six. Really? So, when I met yeah. Morris, he was a fucking dick, dude. Seriously. I he They were opening uh, a Little Caesars. Surprise. And uh, he was there. And I, I, he was signing eight by tens and then just, you know, handing them out. And I'd slid him uh, his rookie card to sign. And I, I swear he picked it up. He, and when he, and when he signed it, he was holding it and then it folded in half. And he just kind of threw it back at me. And I was like, Hey man, you just fucked you just, my card up. Yeah, I'm like, you just, you just fucked up my rookie card of you, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I know you're Johnny Morris. Was, was number was, thirty. Okay. So. <laughs> Half and a couple digits less than 63. <laughs> yeah, a bit. Let's see. Who does Sports Illustrated say the number 63? Oh, shit. Uh, I believe a gentleman. God damn it. Is this going to be like, oh, how did I not remember ooh. this when you say it? Did I lose you? No, I'm here. Nope. It's, okay. Uh, Leroy Selman is the runner-up, but somebody who they don't give the first name, but his last name is Lanier, played for the Chiefs. Well, according to Bleacher Report, uh, the best player to ever wear 63 is Gene Upshaw. And, yes, he was the executive director of the Players Association from 83 to 2009. Right. Until, until, he, until he died, actually. So well, There you go. We pulled some 63s. Out of our asses. And uh, yeah. speaking of... The only, the only, well, once again, the only reason I knew Upshaw was because of his game footage, and the only reason I knew Leroy Selman is because I think he was the Bucks' very first Hall of Famer. So, and Speaking of pulling shit out of their asses, uh, the Cavaliers and the Celtics just kind of came out of nowhere, swapping their two... Bi- well, it, it's the second biggest name. On the Cavaliers, arguably. But uh, <clears throat> Boston, yeah, Isaiah Thomas. Now going to be playing alongside King James in Cleveland. Man, see, Iceman couldn't be here. It's, it's, he could take a shit on LeBron. He's not here to do that. Isn't that, isn't that kind of his gig? Um, what, what's some, what do you, what, well, if we want to, in honor of him, and, and, and yes, he is in absentia, what would be some things he would say? Uh, LeBron's uh, too thin-skinned. Uh, he'll never be as great as Jordan. Um, <laughs> the the best comeback he's ever had is his hairline. I mean, I'm trying to think of things that he would say about LeBron. Uh, that's, that's that's pretty much all I got. His his hatred for LeBron brings out the best in him. Really, he like he gets upset about shit with LeBron that I'm like. I didn't even know that about him. Dude, you know more about him than his fucking, probably his wife. Fuck. You know? Like, and then we'll call out the, the weak ass management in Cleveland because apparently all you got to do is make some noise and they'll jump. Because I guess that's the first thing I thought. Like, wow, it's apparently that easy. You just got to make a little noise in Cleveland and they'll do what you say. Fire the coach for LeBron. Get LeBron some help. Kyrie Irving doesn't want to play there anymore, so they get rid of him. Like, what's going on there? Well, I mean, okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, Cleveland and Boston, obviously. This is from ESPN. Uh, agree to swap their starting point guards, Irving for Thomas. As part of the deal, the Cavs receive Thomas, Jay Crowder, Antti Zikic, and Brooklyn Nets first round pick in the 2018 NBA draft. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. It 
seems like they got the better part of that trade to me. I know I'm not a fucking, like, I'm not the expert on the NBA on this podcast, but, uh, I mean, that's a total of one, two, three, three players in a first round pick for Irving. And I mean, Thomas has a huge upside. He's been in the league for how long? A couple of years. Yeah, I know he's not too far out of his rookie year. I mean, if we're going by, you know, I mean, and this is a this is a dangerous game to play no matter what um, in sports. But if we're historically going by, I mean, he's 28. So, I mean, he's entering the prime if he's not at the beginning of the prime in his career. You know? Oh, yeah. he would, He's only been in the league six years. 2011, he was drafted. Yeah. So, I mean... I, you know, I know he averages damn near 30 points a game because I was talking about it with a guy at work today. And, and he's, a, he's a, you know, he's, <laughs> he's much younger than me um, <laughs> by about 12, not much, 12 years. I don't know. Uh, you, you do the math. You decide if that's that much younger than me. But he's like, he goes, I think this is the, the biggest trade as far as players that I can think of. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it, you'd put it up there with. I mean, you'd have to go put it up there with the trades that, that, that brought the original big three to Boston. But, I mean, those weren't superstar players that they were traded for. I mean, wasn't that mostly draft picks and and kind of role players? Yeah, I think this is your, when everyone was, uh, after the NBA Finals, you know, the night everybody was throwing around the term dynastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was introduced to us. Uh, I, and everyone was talking about what moves do you make in the East. I, I think this was it, quite honestly. I think this changes the game. I mean, this gives, I mean, I, you could argue it's an upgrade for Cleveland as far as who they got. And then for Boston, I mean, you get uh, a re-energized, or I should say, a, a new attitude Kyrie Irving because he's somewhere where he can be the man because it seems like that was Isaiah Thomas's town i mean he was the star so this might be your super team move for the east well wasn't this the uh eastern conference finals last year it was you know i mean it's the first game of the i think they their seasons they play each other first game of the year this year so i mean this is in in my opinion like this is Kind of a, it's kind of a strange trade in that aspect. I mean, think about it. That would be like back in the day trading Eisenman for Sackick. You know what I'm is saying? This like Brown, is this Brown Brown trying to get himself a championship before he goes and play in L.A.? Uh, that's that's the other thing. I mean, is this is this Dan Gilbert and the Cavs uh, hail Mary pass to try to keep him in Cleveland? And I mean, if it is, do you think it's going to work? <laughs> it's 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 their version of getting a boob job and a vaginal rejuvenation. Hey, look, <laughs> I'm trying. It's younger, just like that girl you've been eyeing. Please stay, LeBron. Well, I, yeah, I just I don't know. I mm, this just seems to I don't know. Seems to me, Cleveland got the better end of this deal. Um, Apparently, there's not a lot of animosity in Cleveland towards Irving for leaving. Um, usually, you know how it is, especially these days. Everybody starts burning jerseys and fuck that guy. But, I mean, if you remember, what was it, 2013, there was a 10-year-old that stood up and asked, you know, Irving, are you going to leave us like LeBron did? And he said, no, I'm here. You know, this is a team that drafted me. I'm here I'm here to stay. And I yeah, don't but, care how you – But then how you had you, his little – no, go ahead, well, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, I don't care how you paint it. He asked out of that situation. Well, yeah, he had his little episode this year with, I don't want to play with, LeBron, you know, he what was he saying? He didn't want to play in LeBron's shadow or play with him anymore or, you know, pretty much saying he wanted out. So, deuces. Go up to Boston. They got, they got legal weed there now. They got a winning <laughs> football team. They got a Stanley Cup within the last five years. You know, it's a winning town. Yeah, I, and there's there there is a very strong uh, argument to be made that since the 2001 season, Boston is title town. I mean, oh, it is. It's what two World Series, one or two Stanley Cups. Uh, one. 
Stanley Cup. I mean, the Super Bowls. I mean, come on, there's been five. Yeah, that's and what then, I mean. uh, yeah. what? And then one, one uh, NBA. NBA. I mean, that's that's a damn, that's a damn good run for. I mean, if you if you want to round it down to twenty years, taking it back to ninety seven to two thousand seventeen. I mean, that's. I'm trying to think of like what's the run we had here in Detroit. I mean, we thought we had a good one. We had 84 Tigers, 89 and 90 Pistons, um, uh, 97, 98, 97, 98, and 2002 uh, Red Wings. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's just and that's in going in a 20 year stretch. But that doesn't even those championships cover just what the Patriots did. Uh, the the Lions NFC Championship game appearance. <laughs> In that 1991. Is, <laughs> hey, hey, Lions fans, that is that was your Super Bowl. You, you get used to it. That is close it was as you'll the ever closest get to we've it. been. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I you know, I mean, all I it was know, that man. all it was that year, anyways, was who was going to lose to Dallas. That's all that was that year. <laughs> who wants to go get butt fucked by Dallas in the Super Bowl? We let the Redskins do that. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, oh, you know, we will see. I mean, the NBA, I mean, God, dude, it's already what? It's pretty much one more week. August is toast. So September, I mean, we're coming into that wonderful time of year where you have all four going on at once. Oh, can't wait. Yes, sir. But, I mean, okay, so let's let's – I mean, because I'll be the first to admit, I don't know if if Aaron, wrong podcast. I don't know if Chris wants to admit this, but um, I, I, I my NBA knowledge is very light. Let's put it that way. I'm 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 light in the ass when it comes to NBA knowledge. That's the only thing that I'm light in the ass about. Because uh, my ass is is considerably heavy, <laughs> but I'm just saying. I, does, does this trade like? Am I wrong to compare it? Like, like I said, between like the mid '90s Red Wings and and Cav or, and Cavaliers and uh, uh, Anal Munch trading like Sackick for fucking Iserman or something like that. I mean, well, actually, no, this it, would, is, it wouldn't be Sackick for Iserman. It'd be Sackick for Fedorov. Is what it'd be. This, this, you are this, not wrong in in assuming that this trade changes the game up. This I told you this is your super team move, and I I guess on this podcast I would say I probably have the most basketball knowledge, but that's not saying much between the three of us. <laughs> so so if you would like to apply to be our token black uh, co-host who has basketball knowledge, <laughs> I did win at chrisformedia dot net. Hey, I did win my fantasy basketball league. I went eighteen and one the whole Damn. season, and then I won the league. Just say I'm putting that out there. An ice man. Oh, I see how I see how it is. All right, a couple weeks before the draft, you're going underground. All right, <laughs> all right. We'll see how this goes. I've been mock drafting like a son of a bitch. I've been mock drafting on the toilet just to fill time. Just to get ready. But anyway, I mean, I, I think, think really, I mean, that's all I could say. We managed to get 20 minutes on it <laughs> between the two of us. A training camp starts with basketball here in uh, pr- probably a month-ish. So, I mean, there really can't be any more moves as far as of this magnitude. I mean, you already had uh, what's-his-nuts. Uh, go to Oklahoma City. Was it Harden? Yeah. Or no? Wait. No. Wasn't he already there? And now he's no, back. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Harden went anywhere, did he? <laughs> no. Wait. There, there was some move with Houston and Oklahoma City. I think. God damn it! Hold on. There you go. The 2017 NBA offseason trade tracker from NBA.com. No, Harden's been part of the Rockets since uh, 2012 till till now. No, that's right. The Rockets got Chris Paul. Uh, that's true. Uh, what? Oh, that's right. What's his name? Went to uh, the Thunder. Uh, Paul George. Went to okay. the Thunder. I mean, I'm, as far as you, your your headline, your headline in trades, I mean, those were it. And then now, I mean, Cavaliers trade Irving to Celtics for Isaiah Thomas. I mean, this is – there are really no more names – 
you can move. Unless LeBron all of a sudden says, oh, fuck it, I'm out, you know? Hey, we got you Isaiah Thomas, because I'm leaving. I'm going to L.A. to play with Alonzo Ball, bitch. I mean, that is pretty much the only thing that could happen that would trump this. I don't see that happen. So, yeah, I... I I just it, it goes back to look. I don't don't really give a fuck what LeBron's got to say about. I've never been on a super team or whatever. That late two thousands Boston Celtics team set the template for how to win in the NBA since then, and that's get your big three, fill up everything else with supporting supporting players, and 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 hope you don't run into a team that's just ungodly hot. I mean that's. Isn't that pretty much everybody's, I mean, every team in the NBA at this point that is a contender, isn't that what they're doing? Pretty much. So I, I mean, isn't maybe, there, I mean, isn't there no salary cap or a ridiculously high one in the NBA? Um, I know there's a salary cap. I don't know if it's one of those things, like if they go over it, they just pay a, you know, a fine that goes into a pool. Uh, which, which, I mean, when salary caps are like that, I'm like, is that really a salary cap or is that just a luxury tax like baseball has? Mm-hmm. You know, as, at least as far as I know, I don't know if it's still this way. If a team goes over a certain amount on their payroll in baseball, they have to pay MLB like a tax on it, and that goes into a pool that's distributed amongst the teams that – kept it under that salary cap in other words it's kind of a half-ass way of trying to even the playing field so i i don't i don't know if that's what the nba does once again not the nba expert on the show all right so let's just move on all right to espn espn is going insane i mean there have been two examples in the last couple of weeks where Iceman, he pretty much said it best when he said, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and the most recent example is we have, uh, what is it, a uh, gentleman announcer by the name of Robert Lee. Is his middle name E? Is it Robert E. Lee or is it just Robert Lee? I have no idea. I had to, I had to look it up. I had to look him up. And when I looked him up, I was like, Wait a minute. I'm pretty sure that they don't share any common ancestors because the gentleman is the, uh, of the Bruce Lees. Lees. You know what I'm saying? Or the Bruce Lee Lees. He's not from, he doesn't look like he's from the, the, the southern separate, you know, separatist general Lee. So, uh, yeah. I, yeah if, can you pick up what we're putting down, people? He's you know, Asian. Like Bobby. Yeah. Like Bobby Lee. And so I was uh, like, I was like, okay, so wait a minute. This isn't a matter of there's a connection somewhere along the, you know, ancestry.com website. No, this is just a matter of this broadcaster happens to have <clears throat> the same name as a Confederate general, and he was supposed to announce a game in Charlottesville. Yep. The first game, the first uh, college football game of the season. And ESPN. Yeah. According to the <clears throat> the statement that I heard on NPR today, because the first time I've heard ESPN comment on it was the statement that that NPR quoted them. They said it's purely coincidence, and that's why we did that. Okay, what's purely coincidence? That he has the same name as as the Confederate general? Because it's not coincidence you moved him off of that game. That's a very calculated and and thought out move. All right. So what's what's the what's the coincidence here, ESPN? All right, because if they're trying to claim that they just moved him without thinking about the name, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that whatsoever. Well, no. What is it? What does that statement say? Uh, I'm trying to read it here. We collectively made the decision with Robert to switch games as the tragic events in Charlottesville were unfolding, simply because of the coincidence of his name. In that moment, it felt right to all parties. Okay, well, then, then I, I, I must have read a very paraphrased s- version of that, or heard a very paraphrased version of that NPR today. I mean, but, it, hold on, but hold on a second. First of all, let's, here's let's, something let's, you never, 
Here, here's a phrase you'll never hear. The NPR sports department. <laughs> you're, you're, you're hearing sports news written by people who aren't sports fans. So that's <laughs> probably how you heard that uh, version. Well, okay, let's just, first of all, let's take the first thing that sticks out to me. We decided, along with Robert Lee, okay, so ESPN, we're supposed to believe ESPN went to a, at at best, have you heard, okay, to prove my point, have you heard of this announcer before today or before the other day? Nope, I have not. Okay, thank you. So I think it's, I think it's fair to say he's a fringe announcer. He's not like one of their their main guys here. He's not a boomer. He's not a you know, he's not on, you know, Sunday countdown or any of that shit. He's on Monday night football. If he if he's if he's doing what is it? Uh uh Virginia's first football game, I can't imagine that he's gonna be like, you know, in the running to do like the Michigan Ohio State game at the end of the season. Just saying. So we're supposed to believe that they gave him a say in this, that they asked his opinion before they made this change. I want to hear that from his lips when he's no longer employed by ESPN and his paycheck isn't dependent upon keeping them happy. And if that makes me a conspiracy theorist, so fucking be it. Because that, to me, that just seems like that's a bunch of bullshit. I, I guarantee you, they don't fucking check with the with the announcers to see if they're okay to announce for a game. So why are they going to check with an announcer when they switch what game he's going to announce? Because he's got to name one of them Civil War guys. Oh, no. He's got the same name as a statue they wanted taken down. Now, second of all, I want to know, and this is where this irritates me that we're not an interactive show with the audience because I would, I would, I would love to hear someone give me an explanation of how the fact that he sh- happens to share the same name, not bloodline, not ancestry, just the name, with a Civil War general, physically hurts you so bad that he has to be removed from announcing that game. Because I don't want to hear it. To to to, to quote uh, 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 another one of our hosts, on another podcast. Unless I'm touching you, I don't care about your feelings. I don't care about hurting your feelings. And 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 to to paraphrase Christopher Hitchens, I'm not running for anything, so I don't have to pretend to like somebody that I don't to keep from offending them. So I don't care about people being offended. I don't care about people's feelings being hurt. I want to know how this physically harms somebody for him to do this, because that's to me that would be the only reason to take him off of that fucking game. Is that? By and Sporty Podcast this. on Twitter, SportyChristopherMedia.net, if you would like to interact with us and tell us. But the problem is, Chris, is that we both know by this time next week, this story is going to be buried with even more bullshit coming down the pipe. I mean, it, 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 that's something we're not lacking for anymore. And it's, and it's bled it's, over into the sports world because it seems like every week for at least the last couple months, we have one of these you know, social justice stories that has bled over into, into sports that people, once again, it's, it's a well, well-worn piece of carpet in this fucking house on this podcast that people that don't give a shit sport, about sports are allowed to somehow dictate what, what has to happen. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I've, since I first saw that, that announcement, I've been on every a comment section of every article I can find. I have yet to find a person that defends them taking him off of that game that says it's a good idea. What I'm finding is people attacking people who have a problem with it going, that's right. Cry, cry them white male tears for me. They're delicious. That's, that's, that's the intellectual level of debate I'm seeing on this subject. These are the people who are supporting ESPN's actions. They're saying shit that if your 10-year-old said to you, you'd look at him and go, did we drop you on your head when you were a child? Did you eat paint chips or something? That's the best insult you got at 10 years old. And these are grown-ass adults. Cry your white There's milk an article tears, they're delicious. Published by ES, um, I'm sorry, uh, published by CNN from like an hour ago. That says, why ESPN and Robert Lee are right. Hmm. Go ahead, written by go ahead credit, credit Rox- the source and read it to me. Written by Roxanne, I'm probably not a football fan, Jones. 
Uh, all right. Uh, it's an opinion piece. Uh, for full transparency, tra- transparency, we're recording at about uh, uh, midnight Eastern time. And uh, now what is August 24th? The day the show will be posted. Um, so it says, in the testosterone-laced world of sports, sometimes your name means everything. Think not? I've seen men beaten by mobs just for having the gall to scream out, let's go Cowboys, at an Eagles game. Think of all the racial epithets we've heard of how one football player, Colin Kaepernick, silently taking a knee during the national anthem in personal protest of injustice in America, has divided the nation. Bitch, that's a long-ass sentence. Anyway, uh, we want to pretend that sports are a safe sanctuary from the world's ugly problems, but that, is not, but that has always been a farce. Truth is... Not even the glorious game of football can keep America's toxic culture of bigotry, hate, and violence at bay. It's just too heavy a burden. So imagine if you're scheduled to be the announcer for ESPN's live stream of the University of Virginia's season opener football game against William & Mary in a few weeks, and your name is Robert Lee. But you have watched, along with the world, as thousands of torch-wielding, white supremacists, Screaming hate-filled chants marched around the UVA campus and rallied all their hate at the root of a statue bearing your name, Robert Lee. A monument in the city had <clears throat> excuse me, a monument the city had voted to remove under state objections. Well, it's not unreasonable, even though you are Asian American, that you and your employer may have some concerns. This wasn't about offending anyone. It was about the reasonable possibility that because of his name, he would be subjected to memes and jokes and who knows what else. Think about it. Robert Lee comes to town to do a game in Charlottesville. ESPN said in a statement that was tweeted late Tuesday night. No politically correct efforts. Oh, no politically correct efforts. No race issues. Just trying to be supportive of a young guy who felt it best to avoid the potential zoo. It was a mutual decision, the network says, to switch Lee to the Youngstown State versus Pittsburgh game that same day. Nope, not unreasonable at all. Not in today's America. Not when we just witnessed heavily armed, swastika-wearing protesters who believe in white supremacy clashing in the streets with counter-protesters who believe just as passionately that all people are created equal. Not when one woman is dead and dozens more injured because they had the audacity to stand up to the failed notion of white supremacy. Not even on a statue or a team name or a presidential tweet can incite racial tensions and violence. No matter that... Sorry. No matter that Robert Lee is Asian American and his name has nothing to do with the Confederacy or slavery. It seems unreasonable, ignorant, and downright ridiculous to associate his name in any way with the Confederate general. Still, nothing we've witnessed in Charlottesville or since has been reasonable or intelligent. Yeah, kind of with her there. Uh, Nothing we've seen in Charlottesville or other cities and towns where these types of protests and counter-protests have sprung up could be called reasonable. It's disgusting. Killing one another, fighting, chanting Nazi slogans and counter-slogans. Still it continues. We continue. Uh, Blah. Okay, so hold on. Because... She goes on to preach for another two two or three paragraphs. No, I am done. Like, she's already stated her point about why she agrees with it. The rest of it is just preach, 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 preach. Okay, so preach, preach. her major concern about him doing this game is him being the butt of jokes and memes. Okay, first of all, jokes and memes. Uh, no one knew who the fuck he was. Hardly, excuse me, hardly anyone knew who the fuck he was. And no one was making memes about it until they took him off the game. I am literally scrolling Facebook as I'm talking, right? And I've seen two memes posted by sports sites. One has him with Robert E. Lee's haircut and beard, surrounded by the stars and bars, and and the the in a in a Confederate uniform. And the other says, uh, "Take down." Or, or women, something, something about his statue. The statue doesn't. I would have to go that uh, go back to find that one. Basically, it's this isn't the guy that was on the statue we pulled down. Did we pull down the right statue? So, you're telling me that the whole reason to get him off that game is to stop the jokes and memes, and you think by pulling him off that game and drawing attention to this that it's going to stop? 
the jokes and memes? First of all, I think it's a bullshit the, reason for a bullshit move. Who the fuck cares about jokes and memes? Are, are, are we are we are we literally going to like start shaming people who use the crying Jordan meme or the uh, what's the meme with is is it is it who's what's the meme of the player that's looking like what the fuck or or or. Or the or the meme of of the, the uh, uh, I forget who it was. Are you the real MVP? I mean, because all those all all those are are you know at the ex- at the expense of these people. I mean, didn't we just didn't we just have the ESPYS like a month ago? And didn't Peyton Manning get up there and goof on uh, Durant by saying that he's going to join the 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 U.S. women's. Uh, gymnastic team because they have the best chance of winning gold. And I mean, where does, <sighs> this is the problem. Are we going to start- stop quoting Charles Barkley back to himself? This is the problem with this type of shit. Okay. People get pissed when you say the slippery, when you bring up the slippery slope argument yet they're willfully ignorant of the fact that, that we we live in a slippery slope fucking world now because this is happening because of that shit that happened with them fucking statues and this is and and and, and me personally I don't give a fuck if they leave them up I don't give a fuck if they tear them down I don't give a fuck if they move them to a museum I don't give a shit I, I, I always you know I, 40 years on this planet I've lived in the south have family in the south I've watched people of all races all gen you know both gen oh ooh, can't say that of all genders walk past these statues and, and highways and schools named after these people. And no one ever fell down dead. No one, no one's rights were violated by just walking past these things. But that's, that's what we're acting like is happening now. And what does this come down to? And Chris, you know, I think you know where I'm, I'm getting at. This isn't, there's no physical harm being done to people by these things. There's no rights that are being violated by these things. The only thing that, that, that the only the only thing that people are are having happen is their feelings are being hurt, and I am fucking sorry. Show me anywhere in any law in this country where it says you have the right not to have your feelings hurt. Because I've there never are seen none. It. I, yeah, I've never seen it. You, you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. In fact, I see people on both sides get real petty whenever their side has a victory and go, oh, does that hurt your feelings? Good. And I've seen it for years now. But yet all of a sudden, a very small group of people get together and say, this hurts our feelings with these statues. I don't care about statue. Take it the fuck down, all right? If that's going to shut you up, it's not going to shut them up. This is just, this is just, this is just the opening salvo they're going to fire in the bullshit war that's coming of, and I'm not talking war as far as an actual war, like that, you know, people die and shit. I'm talking the bullshit culture war that, that, that by any standards, the left has already won. Hollywood, the media, music, television is, per, I mean, predominantly controlled by liberals. I got an alert this morning that I had to do a double take on and I should have took a screenshot on and I don't know why I didn't that actually stated, I forget who it was from, but it was something about, uh, I guess, Trump's stupid-ass campaign rally or whatever that he had in Arizona last night. It was something about him fanning. It said, it did literally, the, the phrase fanning the flames of the culture war was in this alert. I'm like, what? You can't tell us there's a culture. You're not supposed to be telling us there's a culture war going on because then that might mean you're maybe pulling the strings but oh that was an early morning stoner thought i had on and it's not about sports but unfortunately it's bled over into sports and it's something yeah. that it's because something we're, that, because of this conversation but it's something yeah but it's something that more and more i notice and this is why I, you know i just i just canceled my satellite radio and it was nice to have when i had it because if I wanted to hear raw sports, just talk about sports, there's enough stations to where I could find stations that would talk about sports, and all they would talk about is sports. But if I, if I found myself on the ESPN stations on satellite radio or the sports talk stations, it was shit like this that dominated the airwaves constantly. And it, it, we can't ignore the fact 
that who owns ESPN? Disney. The mouse. Okay. And <clears throat> I don't care what the so-called progressives say. Disney has put has 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 since Walt Disney was put in whatever fucking frozen shit that he's in, all right, and the new regime came in, Disney has done its goddamn best to be as inclusive as they possibly can. We're talking 20 years ago, Disney told the entire Southern Baptist group in the United States to basically go fuck themselves because they're going to have gay pride day at Disney World and Disneyland. And if they don't like it, tough titty. I mean, I want you to think about that. This is, this is a company in, the, in America saying this. This is a company that's going, we don't care if we lose your dollar because we believe so strongly in this. So you're going to tell me that Disney doesn't have a slant to it, that Disney doesn't have an agenda it's pushing, that Disney isn't banking on the fact that change is inevitable and that conservatives eventually will be either will either die off or will be considered so insignificant that it won't matter and they're not driving this change i mean come on now so yes we end up talking about it is it sports related i guess by a very tenuous thread it is but this is the problem this is the world we live in now everything is politicized everything yep even i mean what 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 look last week like, day after we recorded, what? There's a story about how they, they think that you should rename Yawkey Way in Boston. And then, what else? Oh, that fucking story about how someone on Twitter got offended because they ESPN had a live skit of a fucking fantasy football uh, auction draft. And they, they thought it resembled a slave auction. What? The which fuck is going which is, on? Which is, if we have anybody from the Detroit area listening, you know who Mike Valeni is. And Mike Valeni knows who pays his bills. And for as edgy as everybody likes to think he is, he, t- he, knows, he knows he has to toe the line. <clears throat> Whereas guys like us, we're beholden to nobody except for ourselves. I'm responsible for what I say. Chris is responsible for what he says. Iceman's responsible for what he says. And we've had these conversations off the air amongst ourselves. If you want to say something, that's fine. But don't fucking act like I'm co-signing on it. I don't have to agree with you on everything you say. All right? I mean, because we, we've all expressed some opinions that other people, that people listening could get their fucking nose out of joint about in the past. I mean, we've been doing this for over a year now. Eventually, it was going to happen. But even... What? Even Mike Valenti was like, this is a non-story. If you are offended by the fact that they did a mock fantasy football draft in the style of an auctioneer, then why weren't you offended when the white players were, were, were auctioned off in that draft? Why is it only offensive when the black players were? Oh, because it reminds me of slavery. I don't know what to tell you. This is not, these are not people that were kidnapped from fucking another continent brought through the middle the, 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 the middle trade, brought here and sold off. These are millionaires that people are bidding on so they can win maybe a couple bucks in their fantasy football draft. Stop trying to fucking paint it, this, this picture that everybody's a, a, constantly a victim of something and stop trying to cherry pick who's the victims. He said, now, if these people would stand up and say, I found it offensive because they were auctioning off human beings, he goes, but they didn't. This is selective outrage. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm for me, even I'm come from a different angle of this shit has been around as long as fantasy football has been around. Now, all of a sudden, you're offended. Shut up. Do you is know? Hammers fantasy- looking for nails. You know, what other cliches can we throw in? Do you know how fantasy sports started? There was an ESPN 30 for 30 about it, which is ironic. Um and they talked about why they called it rotisserie baseball, because they went to a rotisserie restaurant and they had their draft. And what, the, how they drafted the, the baseball players is they'd name a player and everybody go around the table and bid on them. And you had a certain amount of money for each team you were on. Everybody could, could only spend to a certain cap. And so basically they were auctioning off players in baseball. What was it? 30, 40 years ago now? Yep. 
This is nothing new, guys. People, this is this this is this is people who don't give a shit about your hobbies, about your entertainment, trying to dictate how you enjoy your hobbies and your entertainment. And if you let them do it, I don't want to hear shit five, ten years from now when everything's offensive, everything's racist, everything's homophobic, everything's misogynistic, and you can't enjoy anything. I don't want to hear about it because you let it happen. Tell these people to shut the fuck up. Or better yet, don't let the media shove it down our throats to the point where we're sitting here talking about it. Because it's the biggest story in sports. Go on any sports site. Go on ESPN. Go on Go on uh, Sports Illustrated. The, the, uh, these, the, the two subjects we're talking about, about Lee being taken off of this game, and yes, I know it's it's been almost a week since the ESPN mock draft issue popped up and all hell broke loose, but still, you get my point. The, the, this is what was deemed, this is what is being dictated to you as important about your hobby, about your entertainment. If you disagree with it, do something about it. Because if not, this is what we're looking forward to. This is what we're looking forward to. And to me, it, it's just, it's all nonsense to me. It is absolute yeah. nonsense. This is inventing, thing, inventing things to be upset about. And call me a conspiracy theorist, fine. I'll put the tinfoil hat on for this one. This is people who don't like sports, who don't like the culture of sports, who don't like competition, who don't like the fact that there's winners and losers in sports. These are the people that started pushing about 25, 30 years ago for them not to keep score and pay to play sports because we got to worry about the children's self esteem. And these are the people that push the, the participation trophy shit. They got their way there. It's not good enough. And what they're going to do is they started with the little kids, pay to play leagues. Then they're going to work their way into the public high schools. Then they're going to work their way to college. And you're going to turn on fucking football on Sundays. And you're going to be preached at for three hours about. All the evils that this country and your race and your gender has done. And oh, and by the way, there's a football game going on in the background. We'll get to it when we get to it. And if I'm wrong, I hope I'm, God, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it doesn't get to that point. That's a world I don't want to live in. But I'm sorry. God damn I, it. And, and, and here's the deal this shit, 10 years ago, we never in a million years would have thought this shit would be happening. And I'm not talking about statues coming down, I'm talking about. This nonsense of, oh, my God, someone who has the same last name as a Confederate general was going to call a football game. So, But we can't do it because of shit that didn't happen in the sports world. And so if, if this can snowball that quickly in 10 years, what's it going to be like 10 years from now? What's going to be deemed offensive in 10 years from now? 10 years from now, when it, the, the National Flag Football Professor, the National Flag Football League exists, the NFFL Well, I mean, if you don't ask that question, then you're being willfully obtuse. I don't know any other way to put it. You are choosing to stay ignorant, as is, is willful ignorance, to not ask that question and not have curiosity about how far down the fucking rabbit hole does this go. Because the answer is, as far as you'll let it. as far Because these people will push and push and push. There is no give and take. There is no compromise. This is not the compromise generation. That's doing this. This is the generation that grew up that if you criticize them, you're being hate. You're being a hater. That's hate speech. This is a generation that grew up being told there's no two sides and every thought they have is valid and every opinion they have is valid as scientifically proven facts. This is why we have NBA players who went to Duke talking about the earth is flat. Look it up. Google it. All condescendingly. Wow. But have fun with that, Boston, by the way. That's your boy now. But, uh... Yeah, well, you know, another and, and, thing that... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. I was going to try to switch the subject, but if you're going to keep teeing well, yeah, off, go ahead, no, man. No, that's what I was going to do. I was going to... Here's... It, this just hit me. This just hit me. And this is... And, and this is this is a little bit of a peek into us pr- preparing for the show. We're sitting here, Chris and I, and we're talking, okay, what subjects have, have basically dominated our sports feed? And you know what subject we didn't even think to bring up because it's been lost in all this lunacy? is the fact that the NFL Players Association head basically told the media a work stoppage is a, almost a virtual certainty. 
come to 2021. And when they said, well, wait a minute, what about how that affects the league 20 years down the road? He said, I don't give a shit about the league 20 years down the road. I'm not going to be playing in the league 20 years down the road. Damn. Damn. I, want you, I want you to think like about it. the Donald that. Trump of players unions. You know, and, and let me, let me, let me, give me a second. I might have to edit out some silence here, but I want to make sure I... Demory Smith. Hold on. Okay. This is through Bleacher Report by Timothy Rapp. NFL's Eric Winston doesn't care if the NFL dies out in 20 years due to lockout. On Tuesday, NFL Players Association Eric Winston doubled down on the comments made recently by the union's executive director, Demory Smith, when he suggested to Monday morning's quarterback, Albert Breer, a work stoppage was almost a virtual certainty in 2021. Honestly, I don't care, and I don't think the guys in this locker room care whether the NFL is going to be around 20 years because none of us are going to be playing, Winston told WCPO in Cincinnati. So if this guy, these guys, the owners, want to own for a long time, they can own for a long time. But another work stoppage might kill the golden goose. The Bengals tackle continued, I'm certainly not worried about it. I'm not going to be around that long. I don't even, I don't care if even, I don't care if even if there is, that's a bad, someone... Bleacher Report, get better editors. I don't care even if there are rookies in here. They're not going to be playing that long. So if this thing dies out in 20 years, it dies out in 20 years. It's not really my concern, and I don't think it's any of these players' concern in here either. ESPN, on ESPN's Outside the Line, Smith backed up Winston after hearing his comments, calling him a person who understands the frame and business of football. The owners locked us out the last time, Smith added. They took, the, they took the decision to make sure people didn't have a place to work. They cut off the insurance to our families. They wanted to force an 18-game schedule. What are you supposed to do? Fight back, right? The current collective bargaining agreement between the NFL and NFLPA lasts through 2020, and the union is already preparing players for a potential lockout or strike. <coughs> Excuse me. Among the issues likely to be negotiated will be Roger Goodell's power to levy suspension and, uh, and appeals, which needs to be addressed. I added that. The league's drug policy, nothing needs to be addressed. And a percentage of revenue given to players and issues like player safety and post-career benefits. The last CBA was signed August in 2011 after a lengthy negotiation and lockout. It would appear the 2021 CBA negotiations could be even more contentious and protracted. Now, let's get the fucking... Stereotypical, you know, old old bits out of the way. Oh, this is billionaires and millionaires fighting over money. Okay, fine. Then don't fucking watch sports. Turn off Sporgy. Go turn on fucking a knitting podcast and leave us the fuck alone. Because we talk sports and we talk about the, the, the shit like this. If you, you know you, there's a knitting podcast, you could find. I know that. I, surprise, there's not one on Christopher Media. Give us a couple more months. But no, right. I, <laughs> some somewhere someone's going to start dating a chick who's like, I want to do a podcast and I knit. So I mean, that's, but anyways, <clears throat> so let's get that one out of the way, okay? I don't even want to fucking. I don't even. That that's an argument that if you want to have have with your buddies at work, I don't want to have that ar- argument because it's been like, just beaten to the ground. Let's be honest here. There's this. A, but, Knitting sorry, podcasts, no. nine popular shows you don't want to miss. There you go. This is an article. There you go. There's certainly nine that you shouldn't miss. But anyways, sorry. <laughs> I, can say I, I, I can say something, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to – I'll save it for I, off I, the air. <laughs> I just pulled an earl. I did a squirrel. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I know, I know. Um. <clears throat> I think the players. I think the players' association, and I make no. I make. I don't hide this fact. I tend to side with labor more than I do ownership in these type of things because these owners are printing money. Even if they run a shitty fucking team, okay, the Fords are never going to hurt for money when it comes to owning the Lions, and the Lions have been a shit product since 1957. The owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars is making profits hand over fist, and they haven't done shit ever, all right? Do I need to go on? So much he's probably going to move it to London. And it could be That's a so shit much money product that over making. It, it'll be a shit product over there, and he'll still make fucking buku bucks, all right? It, football is, is, is arguably, in the U.S., the most dangerous sport to play. 
I would say it's probably neck and neck with hockey, just to be honest to you. It, whereas, I mean, the, the, the percentage of a chance of one play ending your career is higher than any other sport. And it happens multiple times during a game. I mean, in football, you can argue it happens on every play. It just takes someone landing the wrong, wrong way on your leg to get a Joe Theismann-type injury, and your career is over. And yet, they don't have guaranteed contracts. Players retire because of health concerns, and they're, they're, they're told they have to give back signing bonuses. You know, get, get, the average career of players is three and a half years. That's all players. Your average running back's career is two, all right? On top of that, yeah, and it, and I'm going to say this, and this I, this may be hypocritical. I don't feel it is. These guys know the risk going in. It is not 1950. These guys, it's not like these guys don't know that they can get permanent brain damage from playing this game. So it is, it is just like anything else. It is just like getting behind the wheel of a car and getting on the highway. It's an acceptable risk to them to play this game. However, Mm -hmm. when you have billionaires crying fucking the blues about money issues to people that they can fucking cut and disregard a contract, basically at will employment, we don't like the way you part your hair. You're not on the team anymore, and we don't have to pay you dime fucking one on that contract. We signed just as well as you. We there's a fucking issue when you have a fucking uh, um. mm. Shit. I mean, what would you call the retirement program? I, I pensions. Is that, is that, yeah, well, their pensions are a fucking joke. I mean, honestly, especially for the guys that played back in the day. I mean, their pensions are a, a fucking joke. I mean, the players today will get better pensions, but I mean, I've heard horror stories about you know <laughs> one or two surgeries that these guys need that played back in the seventies and eighties and shit. And it wipes out what they get from the NFL pension for, you know, the year. And it's like, are you serious? We're talking a company that makes billions of dollars. You can't afford to fucking, to throw these, how many thousands of players are still alive who played football? You can't afford to throw them some sort of type of health care if it's a football-related injury that comes back to bite them down in the ass down the line. I mean, I get that no one wants to fucking... No one except for the top 20% of people in this country you, you, these days really tend to have jobs that have health insurance that's worth a shit. But, I mean, that's like being a hockey player and you don't have dental. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Yeah. Okay? I mean, I, I'm sorry. You know, and then Goodell. Oh, Jesus. He, he, that motherfucker's running just, he, that motherfucker's running wild. I mean, he's, he's about to sign an extension. He's running wild on motherfuckers' asses with these fucking bullshit, garbage suspensions coming down the line. Oh, there's an accusation. That's enough for me. Six games. Yet I must somehow distance myself from the situation. I'm not going to be there when in the appeals uh, process. You know that came from him. Yet he don't even have the balls to face the player. He's fucking over, fucking out of six game checks. Fuck really? no. It took Chicken him what, shit, how, motherfucker? How, it took him how many years to get back to uh, Foxborough after Deflategate? Didn't take him like two, three years to show his face around there, little bitch, bitch so, ass. Yeah. I read I'm something sorry. the other day. It says he's got he, he's about to sign an extension. It's gonna take him like twenty twenty four or some shit like that, mm. or twenty twenty two. Maybe it's five years, something like that. But if you don't like Raj, man. Yeah. Hate to be the bearer of bad news. He's gonna I, I be just, around for a minute, you know. And then there's and then there's the fact that you you have the NFL, who every October makes players dress in pink to support breast cancer to try to appeal to a non traditional demographic that football would appeal to. But the really the ugly thing is, I think it's only something like seven, maybe ten percent of the money raised by the NFL actually goes towards the charity. The rest of it goes to the NFL. Yeah, you've noticed the pink. It's still there, but it's a lot. Uh, it's, it's played down a lot more than it used to be. Like, yeah, it's there was a report come out. There was one year where, man, almost fucking everything was pink. And now it's like maybe like somebody's shoes, maybe a towel. You know, maybe someone's wearing pink gloves. I, and if you don't think that bleeds over into any place they feel they can make money, 
When you play Madden, when you play through a season, the minute you get to October, your players and your coaches are wearing pink. Sure. You have no, contr- you have no control over it. So they are they are shoving. And it's look, if I understand that when you raise money for any cause, okay, you're going to have to pay people who do the work to raise the money. I get that. But when we're talking 7 to 10% of the money they raise actually finds its way to breast cancer research, people think about that. If I was running a charity and I asked you to donate and you said, how much of my donation goes to the people I'm actually donating? And I said, uh, somewhere between 7 and 10%. You would walk the fuck away from me if you didn't slap the shit out of me for trying to steal from you, because that's what I'm doing. Hey, why don't you give me a dollar to give to charity, and I'll give like seven to ten cents of that dollar to charity. I would keep moving. So I so think you're I, keeping eighty three to ninety cents of this dollar. Fuck you. I think, yeah, I think the NFL Players Association do have a lot of fucking valid gripes, and. As much as it bothers me to hear someone in the Players Association say, I don't care if there's football in 20 years, I understand their thought process behind it. Because if it wasn't for whether you like unions these days or not, at a certain point in in the development of this country, they became an important part of this country. They're the reason we have five-day work weeks, the eight-hour workday, overtime, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Benefits, all that good shit. Now, if you want to argue that it's been perverted, I, I, catch us on Unregimented. We'll, we'll, we'll cover the subject one of those one of these days. But I mean, Saturdays on ChristopherMedia.net. But I mean, to sit here and 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 look at the baseball union, the NBA union, the hockey players union, and then look at the NFL union, and the NFL is by far the highest grossing of these sports. It makes no sense, none whatsoever. Yet I guarantee you this, I guarantee you this, we've sat here and just talked about this for the last 20 minutes. I haven't heard shit about this on NPR. I haven't heard shit about this on local sports talk, not that I listen to a lot of it, because most of it's garbage, all right? And I damn sure haven't seen the amount of articles online about this that I've seen about Robert Lee being pulled from the broadcast at UVA. I bet you've heard about Kevin Garnett not want, or Kevin Garnett, Kevin Durant not wanting to go uh, visit the president. Bet you heard oh, about that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But in the, in the, in just the terms of just raw how it's going to affect your your favorite sport, your favorite form of entertainment, your favorite hob- hobby. Football. Of all the stories I've named, which one do you think has the biggest chance to affect it the most? I would say the one we're talking about right now. But it gets yeah, buried. Fuck. Remember how we yeah. lost two preseason games like six years ago? Training camp started all late. And I know that the younger the people that are that are younger than us by maybe like five, ten years and even younger than that don't think that they can lose lose a whole season. They've done it before. The movie The Replacements, they brought, they brought in replacement players to, 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 to cross the line to play in the NFL in the 80s. It's happened. Hey, don't, remember the don't replacement think it refs? Happen again. Yeah, oh, yeah. Do, you, do you want to take that? You want to do that on a player level? Fuck no. And don't get me wrong. I'm speaking for myself because I don't want to, I don't want to put any, anything at Chris's feet. I, hey, I fell for the okie doke too because what did we talk about first? We talked about all the hot button issues that are being shoved down our fucking throats and we're, we're told that we need to worry about. And it, it, it was an afterthought. It was only when I was sitting here and I'm like, wait a minute, why are we not talking about this issue that I thought to bring it up? So I got to apologize for that. That's on me. So don't, don't think I'm just hey, ragging you know, on the average fan. I fall for the okie doke too. We got to keep it topical. You know, we need ears. It's kind of how it goes sometimes. But I mean, I don't I'll think defend, I'll defend us. I don't think it's too much to, for the for the money the NFL makes to have maybe not a hundred percent guaranteed contracts, but if they cut you, they they got to pay you something, and there needs to be signing bonuses need to be guaranteed to where they can't come back after you for them. And people are going to argue, well, then they'll just cut down on signing bonuses. Well, then so fucking be it. I'm sorry, 
I'd rather sign a contract with a guaranteed signing bonus of $2 million versus a guaranteed or excuse, versus a signing bonus of $5 million that if something happens to me, because it has happened in the NFL through no fault of my own and I can't play, the team can come back on me legally and try to get it from me. And after legal fees and everything else, I end up with maybe a couple hundred thousand in my back pocket. Well, I was going to say Calvin Johnson, but he, he doesn't fall into, into that one. But, I mean, that's, isn't that a recent example that we talked about on the show? How Lions are like, hey, we want this money back. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember the running back for the, the Lions. They did that, too, also. Uh, the one that uh, was constantly injured. <laughs> Which Job one? The best. There we go. They did it to him. The guy who spent his, most of his career in the concussion protocol. I came after him for his signing bonus. That's not and his it may fault. not be hyperbole. That's not his fault he was injured. He wasn't going out there hitting himself in the head with a hammer going, I just want to send it home and collect his, his signing bonus and live off that. Hey, guys, check this out. He <laughs> just does a play where he just keeps running headfirst into things. <laughs> no helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not how this works. You have to play, Javid. I mean, and then you've got to think about the players who are, who are retired, who've been retired for you know, 15, 20 years. Those guys came up in a time when they were telling those guys from peewee football through, the, through their time in the, in the pro ranks, when you tackle a guy, drop your head, bury the crown of your helmet right in the middle of his sternum. They teach you a completely different method of tackling now from peewee football up through the pros. They, 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 that hit on Odell Beckham Jr., and knocked him out of the last preseason game. There was arguments whether that was a clean hit or not. And I saw that hit, and I said, how the fuck is that even an argument about whether it's a clean hit or not? That's a clean hit. And then everyone, uh, the, the fucking Yahoo Sports, as much as we rag on ESPN, who the fuck is writing at Yahoo Sports? Some of the articles that come, that flash, that I have to waste my time reading with my eyeballs, just make me just go, wow, are you even sports fans over there? I think they were one of the people that were like, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, they were trying to come get across in their headlines that there was controversy of why was Odell Beckham even playing in this game? Like, bitch, just because you're first string doesn't mean you don't take a few reps in the first couple weeks of preseason. It's going to happen. Especially in the sport he plays. Fucking Christ, man. Well, not only that, but like, wh- don't you, why are we a bunch you, of big babies? Don't you remember back in the 2000s? I think it was game three under Steve Mariucci. He kept, uh, he kept Garcia in for one more, one more uh, series. Just Garcia. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hey, ended up breaking his fucking leg and missing, I, I want to say, the first half of the season. And we, we, we had to go back to the Harrington clusterfuck. And people were yelling and screaming about that. And I was like, okay, that's a valid thing. He'd already played three fucking uh, quarters. What the fuck was he out there in the fourth quarter for? I understand game three of the preseason is your dress rehearsal for the regular season. But you already, Mooch had already fucking said to the, to the, to the players, to the team, to the media, to the fans, Garcia is our starting quarterback this year. Yeah, he threw him out there for a series in the fourth quarter, and he ended up getting his leg broke to where he couldn't play. And the season turned into a clusterfuck, and ultimately it cost him his job. Who knows how that season would have went under Garcia, because Garcia, goof on him about his fucking speech impediment or not, which obviously we did. All right. Much better quarterback than fucking Joey Harrington, sorry. Especially at that point in time. I, I, if, you, if you disagree, send your hate mail this sportgchristophermedia.net. I don't know what to tell you. Because I Harrington never really showed me anything. He, he played, played piano. On, he played on a soft f- uh, college football team, and he got to the NFL, and he was a soft player in the NFL. And that's all there is to it. I mean, I, you know, NFL is, is 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 meat and potatoes, and and you drink a beer to wash it down with. He's eating fucking, you know, strawberries and cream, and drinking you know wine to wash it down with. Okay, that's fine. But you better fucking you, you better come you better come heavy if you're gonna fucking be that way when it comes game time. And he didn't. He wasn't a good leader. He wasn't a good football player. And he was soft. Bottom line. Okay, this thing with Odell Beckham is not the same. It's not the fucking same thing. So for Yahoo to say that, first of all, the, the, you know the last article from Yahoo Sports that I paid attention to was in 2011 when they broke the the 
the the uh, the booster scandal at a uh, University of Miami. Okay, <laughs> let me clarify. Uh, the latest <laughs> booster scandal at the University of Miami. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one they based the U Part 2 on. <laughs> and I know they're supposed to have some street cred because that's technically, that's the sporting news now. But fucking still, man. Just some of the articles that the, they, like, uh, didn't uh, I forward you guys an article a few months ago about uh, just this whole shame on you article that they wrote about uh, the uh, McGregor uh, Mayweather uh, press conference tour. Just the whole tone of the article was just like, oh, shame on these guys. Oh, this was awful. Don't you, don't you, the sports website, the fuck? Well, I mean, like yeah. I said, well, we're getting back, getting sidetracked. We tend to do that. Getting back to what I was saying, you know, you, the players that you know, the old time players. I don't see any reason why the NFL can't can't at the very least pay the medical bills for things that are football for injuries that are affecting them now that are football related. And here's here's what you do, all right? Because it's going to happen anyways, people. Yeah, you, you take that hit now and you change the rules like they have to limit the danger of things like CTE. And in a generation which is not that long, I mean, tur- turnover in football, it, it, outside of a handful of players, in 10 years, most of the players playing now won't be playing then. So that's a generation in football. It might even be shorter. I mean, you might even be able safe to say if in seven years, most of the players playing now won't be playing then. I'm not talking about to your guys like your Peyton Mannings and your Tom Brady's. And, 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 you know, running backs like fucking Jerome Bettis and shit like that. Guys that have abnormally long careers for the sport they're in. All right. But if they start changing the rules, which they're going to do anyways, to limit the chances of CTE happening to these guys, to limit the chances of life changing and altering, like seriously changing and altering injuries happening to these guys, they're going to be paying less out. In the future, so what do you? To me, as a businessman, I rather I rather take a little of my profits, and I'm still going to make hand over fist, cut them a little bit now, and maybe for the next fifteen twenty years to guarantee that I'm still going to be able to make those profits instead of watching my league go down the fucking go down the tubes in flames. Because I'm going to tell you something. The movie The Replacements was it was an amusing movie, but you don't want to watch that football on Sunday. Not in real life. Believe me, you will be pissed off when Tom Brady's sitting at home on Sunday instead of playing and Joe Sixpack is slinging a fucking football all around and Uncle Rico starting for the fucking, you know, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Throwing a football over them mountains. All right. You're, you're going to be pissed. It sounds, hey. You might be amused for a couple preseason games, but then when the real season starts and the shit turns into something that makes like, you know, the USFL, which was actually, if you look back in history, has been kind to the USFL, considering how much of the USFL the NFL fucking took from them after they, they, they stomped them out of existence. But I'm trying to think of uh, XFL. You really want to watch XFL in the NFL without the, the, without the, you know, all the all the the bells and whistles that made the XFL the XFL. I don't. I, I at that point I'll just look. I, I used to watch every hockey game I could watch. In the last ten years, give or take, unless it's a matchup I really want to see, I don't mind missing games. I, I'll turn off a fucking a bad product. I don't know about you, Chris, but I feel I don't feel any obligation to watch a shitty product. Dude, I have to, you, you don't realize like how many like shitty reality shows I sit through all year to get that free pass on Sunday. You know, I love my wife. I love hanging out with her. We get along. It's great. But, you know, all the time I put in watching the real housewives of who gives a fuck leads <laughs> to I get left alone for three hours or, you know, three, three to eight hours depending on the week, on Sundays for four months a year. I enjoy that pass. Exactly. I feel like the dude in old school fucking, you know what I do on Sundays? I golf. I fucking hate golf. I feel like that guy. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. And I got a buddy who's married that, that echoes your sentiments exactly. The That's problem the thing, is, is that he he procreated twice, so he now his his Sundays aren't his no matter what he does. What's the thing? We don't have any kids. She's not a bummer. It's just like, you know, every Monday when I got to sit next to you, well, you got, hey, I got to watch an episode of Housewives. I just go, go ahead. You know, I don't pick up, I don't put up a fuss about it. I just go, I just, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, we're making a deposit. We're making a deposit in the bank. The bank of football season's coming up. And, you know, I've already even a, a couple times now, I've already just, there's been a commercial like the, you know, the, they'll have the, what's his Charlie Day is doing the commercials for Sunday ticket this year. I'll run those commercials and I'll just look at her and be like, oh, babe, oh, in like a month. Oh, and then she just <laughs> rolls her eyes and does, oh, whatever. But, you know, she knows and that is a keeper. She knows when she hears dun, 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 yeah. that it's over. It's over for that day. Yes. <laughs> that is what we call a keeper, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm, you know, I, as I'm prone to on this show, I went off on a pretty fucking big rant there. I mean, I don't know how you feel about the issues the Players Association has with the owners. I mean, what's your take on it? For that 18 game season, <laughs> that's just me being selfish as a fan. I'm hey, for that 18 game. I'm for that 18 game season if they do cut the preseason down to two games. Yeah, let's do two game preseason at a third bye week. And let's go. 18 games. Let's do this shit. Or third bye week. Excuse me. A second bye week. My bad. So it's what? So you, you every six weeks, uh, there's a bye week. So bye week, week six, bye week, week 12. Boom. Done. Everybody's happy. Oh. Obviously, not all at the same time. You rotate them. <laughs> it's just two weeks. There's no football. <laughs> It'd be awful. <laughs> I I know when they do the two weeks between the last uh, the the, the a- NFC and AFC championship games and the and the Super Bowl, it's like, oh man, like I love Super Bowl hype, but I don't want to watch two weeks of it. Is that maybe so you don't get the bends? <laughs> <It's> like, oh, <laughs> so you got to decompress. <laughs> well, like, oh, like back in the day, all of a sudden, remember when there was no breaks? Like all of a sudden in January, football season was just over. Like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, like we've talked about how now there's there's they've there's officially now no gap between the Super Bowl and the uh, what's it, Daytona 500. Yeah, it's it's Ice Man's territory. I believe that's the race that happens in February. Yeah, I I, I think that's one that kicks it off, kicks off the season. And it, boy, there, doesn't their season end? Like they they their off season's only like a month or two, anyways. Yeah, like, isn't it done in November and it starts in February? Yeah, so that's like what December, January. That's two months, two maybe in some you know a couple of weeks there, two and a half months. You take the holidays off, then you get right back to racing. So yeah, I, I, I hey, I'm down for the 18 game season. I mean, I understand the players' reasons. They say, well, I don't want to do that plus a four game preseason. I mean, I got it, and I. It, you know, you're going to hear arguments from coaches and, and shit. Well, I can't make a decision on who we keep. Well, I I don't know what to tell you, you know. I mean. So start two, two extra weeks of training camp. Start training camp two weeks earlier then. Have more, have more, have more inner squad, uh, or not inner squad, but uh, 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 have more, you know, Pre in 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 training camp have more. What do they call them? Where they where they like like okay. Perfect example was uh, the Bucks played what was it Jacksonville in a in a practice game scrimmage. That's it. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, yeah, have them have them play. You know, basically a, a, a simulated game and find out then. I mean, I get it. I understand. You you know, you might make a bad decision, but they look how many bad decisions. Lions fans, you can back me up on this. I'm a Bucks fan. I know. Look how many bad decisions a team can make with four weeks to decide what players to keep and what players to cut. So, I mean, is it really going to affect it that much more? You know, but I, and another thing, their drug policy is ridiculous. You know, the NHL, for all its faults, has their drug policy right when it comes to weed. They find the players who, get, who test positive for weed. 
they don't suspend them. Please explain to me how being high while playing football is a performance-enhancing drug. <laughs> the last thing I want while high is six foot five, three hundred pound men trying to kill me. That's just me. And I, you can, I can smoke all the sativa I want. Still don't want six foot five, three hundred pound men trying to kill me. So explain to me how that falls under performance enhancing drugs. And I mean, of course, the other one is the you know, we've covered it. <laughs> The Fuhrer Goodell, I mean, he just has way too much fucking power. He has carte blanche to do whatever the fuck he wants. And I still maintain he's he's pissed off Jerry Jones. He's pissed off Robert Kraft. You know, you step on some toes, eventually you're going to, you know, you're going to step on the wrong toes. And those people... Well, he technically are, already, didn't he already piss off Earsay? Isn't that how Deflategate happened? So, I mean, there's three pretty big dudes you don't want pissed at you. Well, I mean, the problem is, is that if it turns into an NHL situation like it is with Batman, it's going to be the middle and lower tier teams keeping him in power because he's going to promise them to, you know, stay the course, do not, do not, you know, listen to the naysayers. Eventually, every, you know, everything acts like a wheel in the NFL or NFL, NHL. You will get, instead of being at the bottom of the wheel, you'll be back at the top sooner or later. And, I mean, when you look at teams like Nashville, the Penguins, Chicago, Boston, it's kind of hard to argue against that. But it's at the expense of what? You know, so-called parity, these ridiculous contracts that have to be signed, that players, there's, you know, you get a player like Datsuk who would rather just leave the league and they trade his contract to a team that has to to make the 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 team minimum as far as spending, a.k.a. the Coyotes. I mean, come on now. That's ridiculous. But, I mean, is it, what, he stays in power, but like I said, keeping the, 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 the middling teams and the teams at the bottom, giving them hope. So I think that's probably what's going to happen with Goodell. Also, NFL is its own fucking... NFL is damn near its own country as far as its gross national product. <laughs> I mean, let's be, it's, it's GDP is higher than like most countries. Once you get out of like the European Union, the Middle East and, and, and America. Yeah. No, that is not a false statement. So, I mean, that is, didn't we, weren't we saying, isn't there like 50 countries that make less money than the NFL? Yeah. yeah, I think we listed off a bunch of them a couple weeks ago. And I was shocked at some of them. I'm like, really? Damn. All right. That's a little insane. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to keep an eye on this story because this is going to be one of those things that it's it's like the uh, it's like the mid-2000s uh, NHL lockout. Everybody saw it coming. Everybody said it was inevitable. And no one outside of hardcore hockey fans did anything tried to encourage anybody who could do something about it to do something about it to keep it from happening. And then when it happened, we ended up with the clusterfuck that we have now. You know. And hey, and then two, how long did it take baseball to recover from the lockout? What was it, 92, 93? Uh, I, I mean, for 90, me. No, no, I think it was like 94. Four. Yeah, it would, for me, it was right around like, middle school beginning of high school like for me that was a pivotal time in my uh baseball fandom because i was on board before the strike after the strike psh, it, it took me it took baseball a while to get me back and if you look what won back people was baseball turning a blind eye to performance enhancing drugs in the home run race between sosa and mcguire yeah kind of <laughs> that's a, that's that's exactly what brought people back that and what Cal Ripken streak? Mm -hmm. I mean, those were the two. Those were the two first major events after that. That lost season, Subway Series might have helped. Yeah, but that came after those even. True. I think. The, I think. I, I think that home run race, even more so than the Cal Ripken consecutive game streak, was what really not only put asses in the seats. First of all, St. Louis is a great baseball town. Th they have some of the most knowledgeable baseball fans. Some of the most loyal baseball fans, some of the most rabid baseball fans. They are fans in the Webster's Dictionary definition of the term fan, short for fanatics. So that didn't hurt. And and Sosa doing it for the Cubs, come on now. I mean, those those two teams hate each other. 
And yet, you know, what happened? You know, you see them guys hugging on the field and, and, and you know, one in McGuire obviously playing for the Cardinals and Sosa for the Cubs. And those guys, it wasn't a it wasn't a Jeter Rodriguez thing. You know, it was a it was it was almost like a, a friendly competition between the two. And that's exactly what baseball needed. The problem was baseball fucking just was like <laughs> We're not going to pay attention to all these performance-enhancing drugs over McGuire's right shoulder when he's giving these interviews. And same thing with Sammy Sosa. Now, Sosa took it a little bit far because, what, a couple of years later when he broke his bat up at, when he fouled off a ball and the court come flying out, <laughs> it was kind of like, yeah. <laughs> hey, Sammy. Like, come on, man. Come yeah. on, buddy. <laughs> stick, a, stick a needle in your ass. You know what I'm saying? Don't fucking cork a bat. What, it's not 1930-something. What the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, I know, right? But Come no, on, seriously. George Brett. What are you doing? I mean, seriously. And even okay. And this is this is this is my argument. I'm going to use other sports to prove my point. Even if you go, you know what? You guys are just being sky is falling. You guys are being, you know, you're picking up the slack for Chicken Little, aka Ice Man, because he's not here with this whole, you know, doom and gloom shit. Okay. I know a lot of people that argue that the brand of NHL hockey being played right now is better than the brand that was being played in the 80s and early 90s. I vehemently disagree with that. But to play to them, okay, well, do you now realize that you have a whole generation of players who came up under the new Bettman rules and trying to phase out the enforcers and trying to phase out fighting without officially banning it because he knows that will... that that. Believe me, I've been to I've been to Canada, and I'm not talking went to Windsor and got drunk at 19. I'm talking like I've been deep in Canada. Uh, there's people who take that sport way more serious than they should. And if he was just outright banned fighting back in the 90s, I don't think he would still be drawing breath to be commissioner of the NHL these days. Let's just put it that way. Someone would have snapped. And I mean, as much as I joke about it, it's taking things a little far. But he's still a piece of shit scumbag, and I hope he gets some really painful, like, fucking hemorrhoids or something. But nothing fatal. Just get piles or something, you know? Just get a bad case of the gout. But anyways, so, so the brand of the hockey being played today, a lot of people are, are singing his praises. But because you have a generation of players who've been raised w- with basically no personal responsibility on the ice to where they can take cheap shots at star players without fear of of having to answer to a guy like a Tony Twist, a Kelly Chase, a Chris Simon, a Bob Probert, et cetera, et cetera, that there's now teams signing an enforcer specifically for that role, trading for enforcers specifically for that role to protect their stars. Folks, that's the brand of hockey that was played in the 80s and early 90s, all right? That's how come Gretzky could skate around and do what he did pretty much unmolested on the ice. That's why guys like Eisman were putting up 150 you know, point seasons back in the day because they had Probert and Koster on their team. So you're defeating your purpose if you don't fucking stand up for the sport that you say you love. I mean, if they make it so you can't hit anybody in football, what do you think is going to happen? There's not going to be so many fucking plays that go over the middle. Or excuse me, excuse me. There's going to be more plays that go over the middle. And guys are just going to be uncontested in their catch because, oh, they're in a vulnerable position when they got hit, et cetera, et cetera. The running game, which is slowly dying off as is, except for just a a strategy to chew up the clock, is going to be almost non-existent. You're not going to be able to touch the quarterback. I mean, it's going to turn into arena football. It's just, you know, slinging the ball around all day. Is 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 that the brand of football you want to watch? If it is... Well, keep supporting the NFL, you know, and when this lockout does come and the players are locked out, which there's a difference. Players are not on strike. The players are locked out. That is the owners telling the players you can't come to work. There is a difference between a strike and a lockout. And if that's what you want to happen, or if you don't care that there's NFL football in 20 years, keep supporting the NFL. Throw your sport behind the owners. Tell them that they're doing no wrong. Look at look down on these greedy players who put you know their limbs at risk every week for your entertainment. How dare you ask for fucking money? What's wrong with you? I've always thought their medical policy 
It's a little fucking backwards. I mean, you figured these guys would have just the top-notch medical care, seeing as how they pretty much volunteered to get hit by cars, you know, well, for hours every week. Think about a guy like Mike Utley, who got paralyzed on the field. NFL didn't pay for his 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 health and or his hospitalization and his rehab, they had to come out of his pocket. Now, he was a fucking, what, what was he, an offensive lineman? How much do you really think he was making in the early 90s? Because being paralyzed isn't something that you just, it's not like a surgery, like an appendicitis. They take it out, you go through, you know, a short recovery process, and you're back to, you're back to normal. Being paralyzed is a constant drain on your wallet the rest of your life, on your family the rest of your life. As someone who's taking care of someone who has a severely debilitating illness, it's a drain on the people that take care of you. And when there's no money, there's no help. And believe me, we live in a world where they'll just let you fucking sit there and go, well, try to work a full-time job and try to take care of that person full-time all by yourself. If you don't have the money, we're not sending any backup for you. So just something just something to stick in your, stick in your brain and let it rattle around in there, sports fans, because... Hey, 2021 seems like a long way away, but it really ain't. It's just a few seasons away. And then you're going to be looking straight in the face of a lockout. And I guarantee you this is what's going to happen. And it pisses me off to say this, but Chris, mark my words in case I'm not here in 2021. And this show's still going. Fucking dig up this episode and dig up these words. You will see the NFL's Players Association. You will see the Players Union concede to dam- and, and bend to where they're damn near broke just to get the players back on the field. And then you will continue to see the owners rake in record profits. And that won't trickle down. We tried that in the 80s. It ain't worked. But, you know, who am I? I'm just a half ass sports fan giving my half ass sports opinion. Damn right. That's what we do here. Have we given enough half ass opinions this week? Well, I mean, there's only one other story to touch on, and I mean, the, the only th- I, it's to me, it, this isn't about Kaepernick anymore. This is about the 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 the, the storm around him at this point. Um, even though the boycott, or not the boycott, well, yeah, it is it is it is a boycott. It's a demonstration in front of the NFL offices this week, and they're calling for a boycott. Apparently, there was roughly a thousand people out there, and uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of different opinions. Um, you had <laughs> you had chants of boycott, boycott. You had Women's March organizer Tamika Mallory addressing football fans. Real quick, Chris, doesn't they go back to what I said? People don't give a fuck about football out here fucking protesting it. Yeah. W- Women's March organizer addressing football fans. The fact that ESPN put it that way tells you all you need to know. Anyway, she said, I don't care how long you've been watching football. If they don't stand up for your children, turn the damn TV off. Uh, Reverend Jamal Bryant said the NFL has proven with her treatment of Colin Kaepernick that they don't mind if black players get a concussion. They just got a problem if black players get a conscience. Wow. Um, Civil rights organizations, interim president, uh, oh, excuse me, N- NCAA uh, intern president Derek Johnson sent a letter to the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, that it's apparently no sheer coincidence that Kaepernick isn't on a roster. No player should be victimized and discriminated against because of his exercise of free speech. To do so is a violation of his rights under the Constitution and the NFL's own regulations. Now, that's interesting because, and this is, I, I guess, the half ass libertarian in me coming out. Um, NFL is not run by the government. NFL is not run by any states. The NFL is a private corporation. They aren't beholden to the Constitution as far as the First Amendment. So I don't know where he gets that. That it's it, it it it's you can say whatever you. This goes once again. This goes back to what we were saying about the protesters who were against taking the statues down. And the neo-Nazis and shit. You can go out there and say whatever you want. You have the right to do that. You do not have the right to not deal with the consequences of doing so. And even me, someone who agrees he's being blacklisted from the NFL, I, I've said constantly, he knew the risk. I mean, it, there's nowhere it's, that says he has to have a job in the NFL. 
Yeah, I've heard another podcast put it correctly. Free speech doesn't mean he has the right to have a job, I should say, or have the job that he wants. It doesn't guarantee him the right to be an NFL quarterback. The end. I mean, quite honestly, I mean, is is this rally uh, like a bunch of butthurt coalescing, or does this always come back to what we always seem to talk about on this or any other podcast? It's well, a bunch of people who just want to force their beliefs and agenda on you regardless and it doesn't matter. Facts be damned. Like, well, here's my question. Haven't we gotten to the point where it's a lot more than just Kaepernick, who's not even in the league at the moment? There's a lot of other players protesting during the national anthem. Um, players who are considered better players at their position, and Kaepernick is at his. I haven't heard of any of them with their jobs being threatened for doing that. Because it gets... Results, man. Results. You produce, you're a blip on the news radar when you do something like that. You're a kicker for a couple days, maybe, and then we will move on because you are a winner. I mean, I'll go so far as to say I think if Cam Newton took or not, well, yeah, Cam Newton and and, and uh, Winston took a knee. I don't think they would be in danger of losing their jobs with their respective teams. Fuck no. So, yeah, there are teams, obviously, who are staying away from him for whatever reason. I do believe in some owners' eyes, and I think it's short-sighted of them that they think that they're going to lose a significant portion of their fan base. But this just goes back to the greed of the owners. You really think you're going to lose that big of that much of your fan base to where you're not going to turn a profit owning an NFL team? Come on. But also, dude. too, I think what's getting lost in this, too, I think a lot of people forget he left a gig that he had. And that do, and you're right. It does get buried. And any time it's been brought up. Uh, he had a gig. He left it. This is the free market going, eh, sorry, you're more trouble than you're worth. Well, I mean, I, the fact when that gets brought up, it gets shouted down with, oh, so he had to stay. Probably the most offensive comment, and well, offensive probably isn't the right word, right, excuse me, right word. Probably the most asinine comment I've heard when someone brings that up, that he walked away from his contract, that he had the option, the player option with in San Francisco was, oh, so he had to stay a house Negro with his massa in San Francisco to express himself. Yes, with his record. And it, with with his record else? and his baggage. Yes, he did. Quite honestly, we don't talk real. Yes, it, he should have. Maybe tried to put together a winning season with his gig that he still had with his team that was fine with him doing what he was doing. Now, I mean, if you want to take it over to the other side, uh, the last paragraph of this story from ESPN is the protest earned the ire of an Ohio Supreme Court justice, the lone Democrat holding an Ohio statewide office. Justice Bill O'Neill wrote on Facebook that he wouldn't attend any games at which strap in, Chris, you ready for this quote? This is, this is a reach to draw a correlation between one and the other to me that I don't even think I could make as drunk or high as I've ever been. That he wouldn't attend any games which, quote, draft-dodging millionaire athletes disrespect the veterans who earned them the right to be on that field. Shame on you all, unquote. Uh, I'm sorry. Is this from 50 years ago when there was a draft? That's what I'm saying. There's no draft. There hasn't been a draft since, what, the 70s? Correct. Um, what the fuck does them kneeling during the national anthem have to do with the veterans? That was a correlation I never understood. That's that's a Fox News right wing talking point because that's what they do. The minute something comes out that they don't like, they go, "What about the veterans?" Whereas back in the '90s, the liberals used to use, "What about the children?" Um, I don't see what one has to do with the fucking the other. And draft dodging, uh, okay, uh, dude. I think they need to You're check. Just that. trying to rile up the "Make America Great Again" crowd. That's what that sounds like. And he's a and you know this is a Democrat on the Ohio Supreme Court, and apparently the only Democrat holding a statewide office, um, I think they need to check him for Alzheimer's because I'm pretty sure if he thinks the draft is if he thinks the draft is still around, he don't know what year it is. Oh, wait. 
we get a memo from Trump we all haven't gotten yet. We are going back into <laughs> Afghanistan, right? Is the big back. news this week? Back. Well, you know, Bro. yeah, I know, Bro. right? We've been there since I was playing Snake on my Nokia. You know, come on. That's it. That's it. We're sending more people in. <laughs> we we never left. Afghanistan for us is like Hotel California. We can check out anytime we want, but we can never leave, man. That shit. Mm-mm. Not as long as not as long as they got what eighty percent of the world's fucking opium being produced in that country. Shit. Well, too. It's probably too with the. Uh, with the axis from World War II, we'll probably always have bases in those countries. Just cause, like, hey, <laughs> just remind them you got froggy with us once. We're, <laughs> we're just gonna hang out here, just yeah. in case. Once, once you go to war with the United States, we're kind of like herpes. We, not, we may, we not be, may, may not be around as bad as we were during the, you know, your first outbreak, and you weren't on Valtrex. But we're always right there just to remind you. You know, we're like, hey, don't, someone, fuck, don't fuck around too much because we can come back again. In case someone in Germany or Japan goes like, eh, it's been a while. Maybe they forgot. Be like, pop up. Be like, oh, no, motherfucker. We ain't forgot. Hey, remember how we vaporized two towns? Yeah, exactly. oh, yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. Japan remembers. And that's why they went from saying, right, uh, we're not going to rule the world through military might. We're going to build PlayStations. Yeah, we're just gonna take over. We're take you over in a different way. <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna dominate the economy. And dominate the economy and take all your manufacturing. But no, I, you know, okay. Here's here's one. Here's the first thing I got to think about this demonstration. Um, seems like I mean, and this article was posted at nine thirty one. So I mean, we're talking just a few hours ago. Uh, not getting a whole lot of coverage, as much coverage as you would have thought. Um, I mean, and tinfoil hat time. Is that because ESPN and NFL, or ESPN is, has hopped in the NFL's bed and let it slide up its ass so many times they know where the side the bread's buttered on? So they know just to give it, like, you know, the, the, the you know, the, okay, yeah, we covered the story. Now let's bury it. Because they know if they make the NFL oh, yeah. look bad, here goes Monday Night Football. That, that is exactly what I was got to, about to say. Is like they got to keep Monday Night Football, man. Of course, they're going to do it that way. Hey, we brought uh, it up. But, you know, we like the ratings you give us. Uh, and, and the second is, I, I, and this is, this is just me. This is just something that I'm like, really, really. It's, it's... <sighs> It's like when uh, college football, certain certain teams refused to call overtime sudden death. They called it sudden life overtime. There was mm-hmm. people holding signs saying, um, stop white-balling Kaepernick. It's like, really? Really? I mean, come on. Grow the fuck up. That's I, I just... I, 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 I don't even know where to go with that. I mean, that is just ridiculous. It's a- we can't do come on man cuz that's already it's already a segment but come on man <laughs> it's, just, it's just asinine it is so fucking retarded it's like this and this is just just a side note it's like this new thing i've been seeing that when when someone dies dick gregory just died for anyone who doesn't know dick gregory was a old school comedian kind you know predated prior and, and all them guys kind of broke a lot of ground and then he went on to be a civil rights leader and when he died you know a bunch of, i mean the man was i think in his 90s so i mean it's, it's not like you could say it's an untimely death like it wasn't you know oh my god a 90 year old died i mean it, okay it's it, i'm sure he'd rather live than be dead but let's be honest 90 years old you're not buying green bananas you know i mean so oh, it's like J- jerry lewis Died at ninety one. It was one of those. Was, uh, for me, it was kind of like one of those about time. Yeah, and, I, mean, I mean, that was kind of like you had a good run, Jerry. Your career's been dead since the fucking late eighties. But, <laughs> but you, you know, know I've been seeing you know articles that, that say they make a point of doing this instead of putting R I P. They say rest in power. Rest in. What does power. that even mean? What power do you get by dying? Wait, I mean, do we is that a black thing? Become, with Dick Gregory? 
Uh, well, I, I didn't think of it in that aspect. He just said it, but most of the articles I did read about him that said rest in power were is from... Is Gregory I, being told to rest in power while Jerry Lewis is not? I, I, would, I would say pretty much... It's safe to assume that their demographic skews more towards the African American of of uh, 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 de- you know people. So yeah, it might, for lack of a, of a tactful way to put it, it might be a black thing. I don't know, but I've been seeing it more and more when people die. Rest in power, this person. Rest in power, this person. It's just, and you know what? Wow, I didn't even think about that. When I first started hearing the sudden life overtime. It was on uh, BET's College Football Saturdays. Sudden life overtime? hmm And wait, BET College Football Saturday? Yeah, they would cover, like, uh, what is it, Morehouse and... <clears throat> Grambling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, according to the Cornell Daily Sun uh, from October 14th, 2016, uh, rest in power... Seems to have originated in 90s hip-hop culture with the deaths of individuals such as rapper Tupac Shakur and graffiti artist Aaron Anderson. The phrase has since been adopted by the queer community and other countercultural groups. The okay. recent violence against African Americans has brought rust in power to hitherto unattainable prominence. Indeed. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So, yeah. It's a black thing. I, I, I was just being a smartass. Apparently what? it's not racist if it's true. <laughs> well, it's racist for you to say it because you're not allowed to say it. Oh, it's a, it's a, the truth is to be no, whatever. It's another conversation for regimented <laughs> Saturdays here in Christopher Media. But no, I mean, I, I just go back to before I, you know, the racial element. I even thought about that. I just go back to what do you get superpowers when you die or something? Am I missing something here? S- super black powers. Well, I mean, it, black, white doesn't matter. I just want, do I get to choose my superpower? I mean, it, it, I, hey. that's, what, that's what I want to do. It, do I, can I come back like Spawn? I mean, that's, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. It, it. It's nonsensical. You don't get to choose to be white nor male. So well, you just get like, to choose your superpower? Or, or is that already your superpower? You're a straight I, white male. I, I, hold on a sec. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, oh, assholes! I typed in BET college football and it says bet on college football. It's it's all sports betting sites. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I have to, you know, actually type out what BET stands for. <laughs> Put network after BET. That might help you. Oh, there you go. Maybe. Or you might find some sports betting network. Bet on college football. Uh, Oh, here we go. List of programs. Uh, Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Sports programming. Black college football, 81 to 2005. Um. Oh, this is just a yeah. BET carried college football games from historically black colleges and university under the Black College Football banner from '81 through 2005. In later year, the coverage was co-produced by CBS. This ended the breakup of CBS and Viacom. Black college football games are now seen on the ESPN networks and the Spire. Spire also reruns select classic HBCU historically black college university. That's what I'm thinking. HBCU stands for games from the past. Bounce TV has previously aired H- HBCU games in 2012 and 13 before dropping them. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's when I first started hearing uh, uh, Sudden Life Overtime. So, you know, I, hey, Sudden Life doesn't make any sense. You both are alive and you're playing. Sudden Death makes sense because whoever doesn't score, well, I mean... It, I, I don't I, I don't know. It just it, it, it seems strange. I mean, if it was a Stanley Cup Finals Game 7 and they were in, you know, period 6 of sudden life overtime, I would have to chuckle. I don't know. It just seems silly. But That shit is just fucking stupid. Uh, this, once again, this is proof 
that this nonsense of changing everything to be uh, uh, to not offend people who don't even weren't even offended it, it, it has been around for a long time now because i guarantee you i remember watching some of them college football games on bet guarantee you that sudden life overtime didn't start in the last season they had college football which is 2005 i guarantee that so there you go folks it, apparently we can't handle the term sudden death it's it, it, it's too triggering. This is the world we live in. <sighs> but no, it's gonna have sudden death. Earl's fantasy football team. Oh, <laughs> that's right. What did, he, what did he name his team? Incarcerated career enders. Yeah. So it's something, ice. something casually racist. Wait, wait, how is that casually racist? I think he was just. I, I get what I get. What you're saying, it could be taken that way. I think it's more of uh, uh, him trying to. Uh, what do you call it? Oh, Work ice. ice. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's just that's my guess on it. Oh. So Dra- draft day's coming, Ice Man. Just saying. And if you would like to play on our team, we have three spots left. If there is more interest, you can sign up, and we'll figure it out. Uh, but we're trying to do a twelve-team league. Uh, there's been you know a couple people chirping at me. About signing up, uh, so if you're gonna do it, you better fucking do it, cause yeah, we're gonna be drafting soon, and as of right now, you can sign up for free. We may decide as consenting adults to uh, make you know maybe have some kind of wage. I'd like to do some kind of segment too, where like you know maybe we have. Um, I'm not sure if the the ESPN fantasy football has the capability where you can like. Make a smack talking video or something that we can use the audio or something like that, or like have like a shit talking competition every week, something like that. Well, I, I know on their mock, fun. I know on their mock drafts that you can go on and do. They have, um, I think they call it a chirp board, so you can like talk shit back and forth to the people also doing the mock draft. Oh yeah, you can do that when we do our draft too. But I would like to say too, who talks shit in the mock draft? I, a couple people talk some shit to me during a mock draft this week. I'm like, first of all, dude, I'm trying out something. Second of all, it's a goddamn mock draft. We will never play against each other. I will never see you ever again. I was going to say, I've done a handful of them. I've yet to see anyone talk shit. But apparently you bring it out in people, Mr. Rappaport, so I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't. I didn't even do nothing. I didn't no, even it's just chirp they can, at anybody. Through the through the through the uh, 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 through the through the, the the internet line, they they picked up your pheromones. They, they I were guess like, they're like, oh, there's a shit talker somewhere in this room. Let me find him. You ain't shit for that pick of that pick, motherfucker. Well, no, this, what, this it's a mock draft. It's it's I've already done a ton, and it's to try out a bunch of different strategies. And the this particular draft. Uh, Two of the top four players this year, as far as projected points, are quarterbacks. And it's like fantasy football 101 and like basic knowledge. You're not supposed to take a quarterback your first round because quarterbacks will always be available. Even good quarterbacks will be available in the later rounds. I feel like I'm giving you an insider info, Rich. But, you know, it's your first year. You, you know, give you a little I, bit of base. I've, I've, and these motherfuckers were like. I've read, up, I, I've read up on it, Chris. Don't worry. I've read up on that. Yeah. And I named my team, you know, Sporty Podcast, you know, trying to do a little, you know, a little, uh, you know, online promo. And what do you get? What's your podcast about? Being bad at fantasy sports? I'm like, Jesus Christ, motherfuckers. It's a mock draft. <laughs> we will See, never play each other. Here's, I was here's, like, hey, you want to join the league, motherfucker? <laughs> here's the link, bitch. Yeah. Here's, here, here's the thing. I heard this quote years ago, and I think it's true because I've never been involved in fantasy anything. The only thing more boring to people not in your fantasy football league is you talking about your fantasy football team. And so it's like I think we're the 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 thing with us is going to try to be keeping the shit talking off of the podcast, like until it's like until the the I mean because. Just for anyone who maybe we picked up a few new listeners and don't know what we're planning on doing, 
the listener who finishes highest, we plan on extending an invite to a uh, guest host, at least a portion of one show, if not the whole show, if they can do it. Um, and if you beat us, obviously you've earned the right to talk shit. And there's people out there that will come in dead last and talk shit. So if you didn't beat any of us, you st- still feel free to talk shit. You're just going to get smashed. So, I mean, especially if me, a fucking wet behind the ears rookie, green as fuck, FNG, whoops your ass. Don't come in here oh, thinking I ain't going to talk shit to you. See? He's already starting. See? There you go, Rich. I like that spirit. I mean, come on. If I whoop somebody's ass and they just so happen to come in fourth, if it's like if it's like you, Iceman, me, and the listener comes in fourth and they come up in here fucking trying to Michael Rappaport their way through the podcast, yeah, okay. It, it ain't going to work out well for you. But what's, but what's but what I like about rap is he backs it up. Rap will talk shit like he's gonna whoop your ass, and then he'll whoop your ass. That's fair enough. I mean, that's fair enough. But I'm just saying, don't come in here with that weak titty shit if you didn't fucking beat us <laughs> talking shit to us. I mean, and if you beat me, ooh, that's like, hey, I whipped the shit out of the retarded kid who's fucking a, a quadriplegic. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you better beat Iceman. You better beat Chris. One of the two. Well, that's it. Well, that's like, well, he ain't never played fantasy either. But two, yeah, beating you or beating Iceman, that's kind of like, you know, that's that's winning your first week NCAA matchup, all right? Hey, you tuned up Appalachian State. You're supposed to tune up Appalachian State. Oh, wait, too soon, Michigan fans? It's 10 years, dude. I don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, it's 10 years too soon. No, I'd say I I don't dude that that loss still doesn't sting as bad as the last ten year record against Ohio State. <laughs> so <laughs> You know, you're supposed to stomp on Akron your first week if you're fucking, you know. If Penn you're not State. beating if you're not beating Miami of Ohio <laughs> and, and and you're U of M, you have an issue for that season. Let me just tell you, okay? It's yes. not going to get better. Unlike what Dan Savage and the rest of the, the Pink Mafia tells you, it doesn't get better from here. So, yeah, you, 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 your asshole will look like a jar of Skippy by the time the season is done. Yeah, but no, that all means here's, you beat Richard the Iceman, you ain't shit. No, 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 no. See that? No, you, I, I'll take that hit. You beat, me, <laughs> you beat me, you ain't shit. But Iceman's talked so much shit and says he knows football so well that he's, he doesn't even have to have have. Had, he doesn't have to have played fantasy football to whoop everybody's ass. He's just, hey, through just pure knowledge of fantasy football, he's going to do so. So hey, there you go. I'm sure this is a, a comparison you can understand, Rich. It was like motherfuckers like you and me, who when Guitar Hero came out, like, oh man, shit, whatever. I'll, I'll beat this bitch's ass first night. And you, you don't play it. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit different than playing real guitar. Look, I, I might be able to play an E7th, but I don't know what where the blue chord's at by muscle memory. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. I, 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 had, I was like, what the fuck? There ain't no such thing as, as the red chord. It don't work that way. Yeah, you understand? You this is bullshit. A whole bunch about football doesn't mean you might necessarily be good at fantasy football. Just saying. But yeah, that is our plan. We're planning on a 12-team uh, league. We have three spots open. I've heard through the grapevine, a.k.a. a co-worker, that it's not letting him join. I forgot to tell him tonight to try again. I'll, I'll have to send him a message. If you're having that issue, hit up Chris. He's the commissioner of the league, and he'll see or what he can do. Or just tweet at him. us. You know, tweet at us, email us, be like, hey, motherfucker, I'm trying to sign up. But what? That's know, what I meant. The, the way say, we hey, run the, the nine people have been able media. to sign up. Just the way saying. we run social media is I pretty much handle the Facebook page. Chris handles everything else. So if you hit me up on Facebook, I'm going to have to forward it to him anyway. So hit him up on Twitter or, or some other you know form of social media yeah. that he covers. You can do that at Sporgy Podcast. You can email Sporgy at ChristopherMedia.net. You can look us up on Facebook. Just look up Sporgy Podcast. Uh, the downloads get more and more every week. Thanks for the Twitter love with the retweets and such. Uh, yeah, Iceman will be back soon. But uh, Rich and I will catch you next week. Peace. All right. Later, guys. If you like this show, please tell a friend. 
Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook by searching for Christopher Media. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. And thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. What do you want a da da What do you want a da 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 I have not a da with a da 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 we could switch to Progressa da da. Oh yeah. We could switch to Progressa and sa. Mka. We could sa and have to buy some za. Oh yeah. Let's switch to Progressa da da and get some za with the money we saw. Yeah. Now we know we're gonna da da da. These days, nothing is normal and everything is weird. But you could still save big when you switch to Progressive. It might just be the most normal thing you da da da. Quote da da at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Me 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 me, but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Powder Donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl and a foul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.